Hi, this is Phil Shapiro in Tacoma Park. I'm holding in my hands over here my EEE PC laptop, also called a netbook. Somebody gave this to me for free, and it's an old computer, but it's still quite functional. This computer comes from 2008, and it originally shipped with Windows XP. I've now installed the free software called Linux, and the computer has been reborn and can now find a new home, maybe with a refugee family or anybody who would like to put an extra computer to use. I've hooked up this little netbook to a nice big monitor. I have a 24 inch monitor here and I'm using the VGA connector. This is 1920 by 1080 pixels. I tried to hook this up yesterday and I wasn't able to do it. Uh, but I came up with an interesting little tip that might be helpful to you. So yesterday I turned on the computer and I plugged this in and I went to the display settings and I tried to tell the netbook that I just wanted to use the big monitor. I didn't want to use the small monitor and the big monitor, just the big one. But the netbook got kind of sluggish and it uh, was not responsive. So today, I tried exploring and I went into the advanced settings in the display and I turned on something called configure monitor or configure display when connecting. So now when I plug, I turn on the netbook and then after it boots to the desktop, I plug in this external monitor and on the netbook, there's four choices and I choose the choice all the way on the right, which means I just want to use the big monitor. I use either the mouse or the trackpad to click on that choice. And then this, the netbook goes black. And the only thing I see is the nice big monitor here. So um, I installed some software called Linux Mint 19.3 XFCE. This netbook has two gigabytes of memory, which is not a lot of memory if you have Windows. But for Linux, it's, it is quite a lot. Um, this Linux Mint XFCE is very lightweight. It doesn't require much memory. In fact, when I'm surfing the web with Chromium web browser, I still have one gigabyte left of, of memory, even after I'm using the browser. So um, I have Chromium 100 on this uh, computer installed, and I have LibreOffice, which is the free word processor that's equivalent to Microsoft Office. LibreOffice is used at government and university um, offices around the world. It's very high quality software. You can make word processing documents, spreadsheets, PowerPoint style presentations. Um, I love LibreOffice. It's free and then every year it keeps getting better. So it's already excellent. And then next year there's going to be a newer version and it's going to be even more excellent. So I consider that a good deal. <laughs> if the software is free and it's getting, getting better, um, I wish more people would know about it. And maybe you can help spread the word about LibreOffice, L-I-B-R-E. You just, you just download it. It works on Linux, Mac, or Windows. Um, let's, Let's start up the word, word uh, the browser here and see how fast this computer can surf the web. So it's not totally speedy, but it's also not totally sluggish. You'll see. I'm going to go say to the BBC website. So I'm going to type in bbc.com. And here we go. Let's see how fast it takes to load. Here comes the BBC website and you can see it's not all that sluggish. I'm using Wi-Fi. It does have an Ethernet uh, connection, so we could use Ethernet if we wanted to, or wired internet connection. But look at here it is. I scroll up and down on the on the BBC website. I've tested this uh, Linux on this netbook with Google, Gmail. It works great on Gmail, Google Docs. I didn't install Zoom, even though this netbook has a webcam. I don't think it, the processor is quite fast enough to do video conferencing. So I, I didn't even test it yet. Um, but I'm pretty sure that it would struggle to keep up. Um, you can do word processing on here. You could, um, let's try YouTube videos. I haven't even tried that. Let's try it. I'm curious. It either works or it doesn't. 
we'll go, we'll go and look at one of my own YouTube videos, um, a learning video I made right in the same room here called Coin Questions at the Library. So we'll find out if this little netbook is able to play that video. It might, it might play it a little choppy. In case it does play choppy, um, it just said page unresponsive. Uh, if in case it does play choppy, there might be a way of downloading the video and then playing it with this free software called VLC. Um, so VLC might play it fine after you download it on a different computer. So I'm going to say coin questions at the library. This is at the library. This is a video I'm very proud of making. It's an educational video. So here it comes. Let's see if it, how well it plays it here. Yep, here it is. You can see this computer is not all that sluggish. Look at it. Wow, look out. Bum, 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 bum. So I've never seen whether this plays or not. We'll find out right now. And maybe we'll change the resolution because the processor in this 2008 computer is not all that powerful. But I'm going to skip the ads over here, skip the advertising, and I can come over and click on the gear and change the resolution so that it's a lower resolution. Here it is. The quality says 240p. Okay. What else does it say here? Okay. 240p. Okay. Now 240p is too blurred. So let me click on here and let's see if I can go up to, um, let me go up to 480p. Let's try that. That should be, that should be viewable. And you can learn something here. Yeah. So here, here's my video, Coin Questions to the Library. It's working pretty nicely. Um, I shot it right here in the same room. Uh, and these are like little puzzle questions you can ask with uh, students as young as kindergarten and as old as high school. So um, uh, this is like mental arithmetic that you can do on car trips or if you're waiting at a doctor's office or if you're waiting at a bus stop. These are fun mental arithmetic things called coin questions at the public library in Tacoma Park, where I live and work. So you can look up that video. And um, let's take a look at LibreOffice. Here's LibreOffice, L-I-B-R-E, LibreOffice. It looks and works almost identically to Microsoft Word. And it has many of the features of Microsoft Word. Not everything, but many. And it's got the spell checker under tools. It's got spelling checker, thesaurus, word count. Um, so you can see it's, it's, a, it's a full featured word processor and you can save your documents to Microsoft Word format. So that's neat. So now I'm here back at the desktop. This, this desktop says LM, Linux Mint. So Linux Mint is built on top of this other Linux called Ubuntu Linux. And Ubuntu Linux is widely popular. Some, you, some of you might have heard of Ubuntu Linux. And Linux Mint is, has uh, the base of Ubuntu, and it has a few extra things. So the smartest people I know like Linux Mint, and so... I just do what the smartest people I know do, and I like Linux Mint. There are other Linuxes that you can explore. There's many good reasons to try a different Linux. They call them different distributions, and there's dozens of them. Um, and some of them are very delightful. Some of them are very lightweight. Some of the Linux you can use on a very old computer that has 500 megabytes of memory. So you can, uh, Linux is very humble as an operating system. It doesn't have that much uh, requirements as other operating systems. I put Linux even on old Macs. I uh, recently put Linux onto like a 2012 MacBook Pro and the computer's born again. Hallelujah, born again. It's going to last another five more years with a totally up-to-date web browser. And I gave it to a seventh grade student here in Tacoma Park. So... Um, this is my little introduction to the EEPC. 
Um, if you want to find out more about this particular laptop or any laptop, you type in the name of the laptop and the model number, and then you type in the word review, and then you'll find some magazine that reviewed that laptop in the same month or close to the same month that it was first released. So I typed in EEE PC 1000H. That's the name of this model of this, of this netbook. And I went to Laptop Magazine and they had a very detailed review that was quite praiseworthy of this lightweight little laptop. This thing is so cute. You could easily mail it to another country. You could mail it to, uh, for, to Haiti for use at a hospital in Haiti or a school in Somalia or wherever you uh, think that uh, a cute little computer can be put to use. Or maybe you have a friend here, right here in the United States, who could use an extra computer um, at their house. Uh, this is not a fast computer, but it is very usable. And my fourth grade teacher, Mrs. Woodford, at the American School of Paris, she taught me the difference between the words uh, opinion and fact. And um, to say that a computer is obsolete, that's almost always an opinion. Today, we learned the fact that this computer is not obsolete. It can be put to use and, um, and you have a role in helping to spread that truth so that people don't put these in the trash. Please don't put a netbook in the trash. Find somebody like myself in your community who likes Linux. Um, you have to sometimes ask around who likes Linux. Ask at your public library. Um, you see, I'm wearing a sweatshirt that says opensource.com. Let's go to the opensource.com website, which is sponsored by Red Hat, a big Linux company that's now part of IBM. So let's come over here. I'm going to type in opensource.com. And if we go to this website here, there are many, many interesting articles. They have new articles every week. You can, you yourself can submit articles and they're very encouraging. They provide free editing of the articles. Um, even if you're a high school student or a middle school student, if you want to write an article, they'd like to hear from you. So the articles I like best on this website are from a friend of mine, Don Watkins who is a retired educational technology director in Western New York State. And he has written about 250 articles for this website. I always learn something new when I'm reading something by Don Watkins. And there's other excellent authors on this website. I've written about 50 or 60 articles myself. I should be writing some more. Um, I think I've got some that I'll send over to these folks. Um, and you can see scrolling up and down. This is a lovely little netbook. Um, the battery on this lap, it still works quite well. So often with the old laptops, the battery might not have a lot of power left, but I just happened to notice the battery on this netbook, which was given to me for free, um, is actually quite strong. So I hope you learned something new today. Please help spread the word. Uh, we don't need to put these in the trash. We should reuse them. Um, and um, if you know somebody who has one to give away, there are computer refurbishing organizations. Um, you can send me an email. I'll tell you about some of my friends in uh, St. Paul, Minnesota, Minnesota, <laughs> and in other parts of the country who are putting Linux computers uh, up in the Toronto area, uh, putting Linux computers to use in schools. And uh, Lancaster, PA, Lancaster, PA. They use Linux in the schools over there. Very inspiring stuff. Uh, and you can also maybe take, take your netbook to a makerspace. So the makerspaces are the tinkering spaces, and that's where the smart people hang out, and that's where you should hang out. <laughs> so um, look up and see if there's a makerspace in your neighborhood. If there isn't, you should travel to where there is one just to see what a makerspace is like. Because makerspaces almost always have somebody over there who loves Linux, L-I-N-U-X. 
So this is Phil Shapiro. Oh, one last thing I wanted to just point out. Linux looks a lot like Windows over here. We have it like a start menu and we have control panels. Um, right before I made this video, I plugged in this little netbook to a brother laser printer and within about two or three minutes, this thing was printing to the laser printer just beautifully. So Linux works very well with HP printers. Uh, I've heard that it doesn't work so great with Lexmark. Somebody told me it didn't work with their Lexmark, but um, HP printers and brother printers, um, you can look up on the web to see if a particular printer might have work well with Linux or not. And there are websites that explain about that kind of thing. So I hope you learned something new. Until next time, this is Phil Shapiro in Tacoma Park.